Hey guys, welcome to the Asian Hustle Network podcast. My name is Brian. And my name is Maggie. And we interview Asian entrepreneurs around the world to amplify their voices and empower Asians to pursue their dreams and goals. We believe that each person has a message and a unique story from their entrepreneurial journey that they can share with all of us. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Asian Hustle Network podcast. Today, we have a very special guest with us. His name is Jim Quick. Jim is a leader in brain performance, mental fitness, and memory improvement. After a childhood brain injury left him with learning challenges, Jim created strategies to dramatically enhance his cognitive performance. He has since dedicated his life to helping others unleash their true genius and brain power. He is CEO of Quick Learning, the premier online accelerated learning academy with students in 195 countries. His clients include Google, Virgin, Nike, Zappos, WordPress, Cleveland Clinic, Caltech, Harvard, and Singularity University. Jim is the author of the New York Times and number one Wall Street Journal bestseller, Limitless, Upgrade Your Brain, Learn Anything Faster, Unlock Your Exceptional Life. He is the host of the acclaimed Quick Brain podcast, which is consistently the top educational training show on iTunes with tens of millions of downloads. His mission, no brain left behind. Jim, welcome to the show. Thank you both so much. And thank you everybody who's taking time to listen to uh, this conversation. Of course, Jim, we're so excited to have you here. Like we've been following your journey for a while. We started following you on Instagram naturally. And the most iconic thing about you is, is that we saw you pointing to your, your brain. You know, we're like, oh, what is this guy all about? You know, <laughs> having this podcast is absolutely amazing. So you just want to hop into your story. And particularly, you want to hop into when you were five. And we want to have you take that away. Yeah. Um, when people see me on stage, so I'm a, a brain coach, you know, as, as you mentioned. Um, what does that mean? You know, I help people with their brain and help better focus, improve their memory help them read faster, um, do, do these mental feats so that they could really win, have greater productivity and performance while they're out there hustling. And, um, when I, on stage, I usually do these demonstrations where an audience will maybe maybe 50 or hundred people stand up and introduce themselves and I'll, I'll memorize all their names as they share their names yeah. or an audience will give me a hundred random words or a hundred digit number. And I'll recall them forwards and backwards. But I always tell people, I don't do this to impress you. I really do this to express to you what's possible because the truth is everyone listening, you can do that too, regardless mm -hmm. of your age and your background, your career, education level, financial situation, your gender, your history, your IQ. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I know it is because I, um, I grew up with learning difficulties. And uh, so to answer your question, when I was five, I was in kindergarten class and I, um, I took a really bad fall, uh, head, head injury. I was rushed to the hospital. Um, and my parents, uh, they, they set up's never the same, you know, you were before I was very playful, very curious, very energized. I just became very, very shut down. Mm -hmm. And, um, where it really showed up was in school. Um, teachers would repeat themselves over and over again and I would pretend to understand, but I didn't really understand. Um, and I had poor focus. I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't re retain anything. It took me an extra three years just to learn how to read, which was very it's embarrassing, right? You know, they're passing around the book and, you know, it gets closer and closer. You had to read out loud and I would get the book and I, it could have been another language. I wouldn't understand it. I would just pass it on. And, um, I remember when I was nine years old, I was slowing down the class and I was, I was being teased, uh, you know, you know, childhood wasn't the most, uh, school wasn't the most, uh, you know, most fun time of my life. You know, my, my parents, they, they immigrated here. My dad was only 13 years old and uh, didn't speak the language and he lost both of his parents. And that's why he moved here to live with his uh, aunt, who I only knew as my, my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And, um, he left two siblings behind and, um, you know, it was difficult. You know, my mom lived in the back of a laundromat that, that she worked in, you know, in Chinatown. And it was, um, you know, and they had so many jobs. And so my grandmother was the one that was caring for me when I was having my learning difficulties. Uh, she actually started showing early signs of dementia and anyone who's listening to this, who's had experience with somebody who has had Alzheimer's or something like that. It's, it's really, it's really hard. You mm -hmm. know, uh, you know, she would call me by my father's name. She would repeat something she just said 30 seconds ago. And you know, and, and keep in mind, I'm only five or six years old and I'm going through my own challenges and I don't, and I'm seeing this. And then, so I, I was taking care of her at age like six and 
then she shortly passed, you know, right from there. And so those are really kind of difficult times. When I was nine, a, a teacher pointed to me from the whole class and said, that's the boy with the broken brain. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's, and I don't think she would said it maliciously. I, I was being, I think she was coming to my defense because I was being, you know, teased a lot. And, um, but all I remember was I had the broken brain. So every single time I did badly in school, which was often every time I wasn't picked for sports, I would always say, Oh, it's cause I had the broken brain. Mm-hmm. And so I struggled all through school and, um, you know, I was, I was introverted, you know, culturally, you know, my parents are pretty, pretty emotionally reserved. <laughs> um, and, but I became very shy mm-hmm. and that, that's different than being introverted. Um, my superpower growing up as a kid was really shrinking down you know, and minimizing, I don't want to take up any space. Right. I would sit behind the tall kid in class. I would sit all the way in the back. So I, I wasn't called on. I would, I would do the work though, because my, my parents were very uh, disciplined, you know, they encouraged hard work. Um, but I, if a teacher asked me to present on a book report, I would actually, I'd be so scared. Mm-hmm. I would lie and say, I didn't do it mm-hmm. because I was just so scared of being judged or having the spotlight. And, uh, you could see the disappointment in their face, the teachers, but when everyone left class, I would take out the book report out of my book bag and just throw it away in the trash. You know, that's how self-conscious I was. And so that was, that was my journey all through um, junior high, uh, high school also as well, until I was 18 years old when I discovered some strategies on, on um, brain friendly ways to be able to improve my focus and my memory. And, and I found my, my passion, um, and, and I also found my purpose. I think a passion for everyone who's listening to this or hustling passion is what, what lights you up. Right. And learning became my passion. It didn't start that way at all. But, um, but I think purpose is how you use your passion to light other people up. So my passion is learning. My purpose is teaching other people how to learn because I want to light other people up that way. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I've been doing it, um, three decades later, I've been doing it every day since it's funny because my two biggest challenges were, learning and public speaking Mm -hmm. and the universe has a sense of humor because all I do is public speak on this thing called learning, Mm -hmm. you know, but, but growing up with these difficulties, my passion is really my mission in life is building better, brighter brains. So people could have their best, best future. Mm -hmm. Jim, I think your story is so inspirational for me Mm -hmm. personally, because I, I sort of have a learning disability growing up as well. And my teachers couldn't understand what was wrong with me. At first, they're like, maybe he doesn't know how to speak English that well. So they put me in ESL classes Yeah. <laughs> for the longest time. Even though I was born here, I always just speak English. But they're like, you're not picking up the language fast enough, you yeah. know? And then they put me in speech therapy classes to make sure I can speak correctly. Because same, same problem as you. When the book came to me, I froze. <laughs> I, I did yeah. not... I did not learn that well. I did not speak that well. And it's always been self-conscious for me, you know, and yeah. hearing your story and following you for the last couple of years, I think I followed you on Instagram and you were like 60,000 members, uh, 60,000 followers or something like that. I was okay. like, man, there's this guy on social media that talks like me and looks like me and makes me so relatable, you know, and oh, to have man. you in this podcast a couple of years later to talk to you about this experience is pretty surreal to me. Oh, thank you. I, I just, I just got goosebumps when you said that. I, I call, yeah. them, call them truth bumps. <laughs> I, um, you know, I, I believe that we're all, we are all here for, for a reason. And, yeah. you know, and while we're out there hustling and we're working hard and we're working smart and, and yeah. we're being kind, I feel like it's important to surround yourself with a peer group, you know, cause we are the people we spend time with and it's nice. It's great to have mentors. It's great to have people to encourage us, to challenge us, to cheerlead for us. I always tell people if you haven't found that person yet to, to be that person for somebody else, yeah. you know, especially be that person for, for yourself. Yeah. You know, it was tough in school. Also was, there was only one other Asian in my whole, you know, in school, my pub, I went to public school in New York. Um, only one in my whole school. And he was one year older. His name is, uh, is uh, Roger, Roger Lee. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because he, he was on the opposite side of the bell curve. Um, you know, he missed one, one answer on his SATs and he was so upset and he ended up taking it again to get a perfect score. He was in the head of the big debate team, the head of the math team, he was class field valedictorian. And I think also with that contrast, you know, with all my teachers and you know, his peers in school, it, you know, I think they set an expe- expect expectation, you know, maybe for me. Um, and I was on the other side of that, that curve that made his possible, 
But, um, you know, it, it was challenging times. But I do believe through challenge comes change. I believe that going through struggles give you, gives you strength. That, you know, the things that maybe, I don't know if the word is ashamed, but the things that I was really kind of, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit embarrassed about, you know, um, you know, whether it's my learning difficulties or, um, you know, my, we didn't have, you know, we weren't, my, 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 my parents are extraordinary in that they're just good people, you know, mm-hmm. and they, they give a good role model, but I, um, but I think they're, those are the things I'm most proud of now. And so, you know, my, my, I love to encourage people that they have, they have genius inside of them, that it's not how smart you are. It's really, how are you smart? Yeah. yeah. It's not how smart you are. It's really, how are you smart? And when you discover that, you discover those, those superpowers that lie dormant. I think that we're all born with this, like, what if we were all born with incredible superpowers, but we weren't told that we were, you know, and then we weren't shown how to utilize them. Yeah. And I feel like school is an amazing place to learn what to learn like mm-hmm. math and history and science and Spanish or, you know, anything, but there's not a lot of classes on how to learn those things. Right. There's no class called concentration. There's no class called, you know, like a speed reading class or memory. I always thought it should have been like maybe the fourth R in school. That would have been really helpful. Reading, writing, arithmetic, obviously spelling was, was one of them, but, but <laughs> retention, you know, Socrates said there is no learning without remembering. And so I, that's really my mission in life is to kind of fill in those gaps. And it's not a slight against teachers. You know, my mother became a special education teacher um, mm-hmm. because she was so determined to help me, you know, and then she being passionate about helping kids that were struggling like I was. But, um, you know, it's a system issue. You know, we live in an age, I have done, you know, done program for like SpaceX and different places where, you know, we have living in that uh, a world where we have autonomous electric cars and spaceships that are going to Mars, but our vehicle of choice often when it comes to our own learning and personal growth is often like a horse and buggy, mm-hmm. you know, it hasn't updated as much as the, the world has updated, you know? And so I love working with students and entrepreneurs, uh, and people of different ages and stages, showing them a lot the most important, you know, gift that we have, which is the human mind. Yeah. yeah. That's very powerful. And, you know, I, I also wanted to add that I find your story incredibly inspirational just because, you know, similar to yourself and Brian, I also grew up with a lot of learning difficulties. And for really? some reason, I was always the slowest in class. You know how in elementary school, you would always have to go through assignments and actually complete the assignments during class. And I would always be the slowest one. And I would have my parents come in for parent teacher conferences. And my my teachers would say, you know, like Maggie, she's she's actually like really slow in doing her work. I think that, you know, we have a problem, we have an issue here. Maybe there's something that you can do at home that can help her, you know, improve her learning capabilities, or maybe, you know, just teach her a little bit faster how to be faster, right? And I always had that, you know that kind of insecurity. And I was always wondering like, why was it so easy for other people? Why was it so easy for other people to read faster, to learn faster? And, you know, your your story really touches upon me. And, you know, you mentioned that you went through a time where you started learning these strategies, right? And yeah. really want to know, like, what was that turning point for you? Because I think a lot of people have a lot of difficulties kind of going through that turning point, kind of learning and picking yeah. up all these strategies. So- yeah, and to add on with Maggie as well, I feel, I'm, I feel like in every bad situation, it's a good situation, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. we recognize our strength and weaknesses so young, we yeah. our sense of awareness increases. Yeah. It's like, okay, quote unquote, what can I do to improve myself? Because I work a certain way. You know, yeah. like ever in that situation, you create this heightened sense of awareness where it's like, you think about yourself, you think about how the world works, you look at other people, you study other people. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering, like, was that the beginning of your own passion that you wanted to learn about how people work, about how yourself works, about how your brain works? Yeah. I mean, I feel like when you're like painfully shy and you're just there, you're just observing everybody else. Mm-hmm. And you start asking those kind of questions, like why, you know, why am I working so much harder than everybody and not getting the same kind of results? You know, why, um, why are some people like smarter than other people that are doing better at school than others? And, um, what's wrong with me? You know, I go through that spiral. Right. Um, and, but, you know, you start asking those questions, you start getting some answers and, um, I guess like things started to shift when I was 18. I was lucky enough to get into a local, um, you, you know, university. And I, um, I thought freshman and I could take, make a fresh start. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I took all these classes and I wanted to show the world and, um, show myself, 
make my parents proud. I'm, I'm the oldest of three siblings. So I wanted to be a good role model for my younger brother and sister. Mm-hmm. Um, but I actually did worse because, <laughs> you know, college is so, so much more difficult than high school because you're so much more is left on you. You're spending less time in class and more time, you know, trying to figure out yourself. And I, um, I did worse and I was ready to quit school because we didn't, we didn't really have the money for me to be in school as it was. And, um, I didn't want to waste that. And so I, um, when I had that thought about quitting, I was talking to a friend of mine and he said, well, Hey, why don't you get some perspective? I'm, I'm going to go home this weekend. Why don't you come with me? And, uh, just kind of, you know, it, it helps to get a new point of view, right? Get, get some distance on something, maybe change the people you're spending time with or the place that you're spending. You know, sometimes we get stuck. It helps to kind of, you know, go somewhere else. And, um, and the family, when we went to visit, um, it was pretty, pretty well off, you know, different than, than the way I grew up. And the father's walking me around his property by the water and asked me a very innocent question, which is the worst question you could ask me at the time. Mm-hmm. He says, Jim, how's school? Mm-hmm. Which I just, you know, I, you know, and I'm, I keep, I have this boiling point kind of building up and I just break down in front of this complete stranger and I start bawling, uh, which is very uncharacteristic of me, but I just have so much pressure. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, um, tell him my whole story about, you know, being broken and everything and tell him I'm, I'm scared of, you know, telling my parents that I, I'm not going to make it through this. And, uh, he says, well, he asked me another question says, Jim, why are you in school? And, the, and honestly, you think it's kind of an obvious question, but I never thought about it. I just thought this is what we do, right? This is, you know, what you're supposed to do. And uh, he says, well, why, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to have? What do you want to share or contribute? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I honestly had no answer because no one's ever asked me those questions. I just thought it was expected. Um, you know, this was what everyone just was supposed to do. And, um, and I go to answer him and he says, stop. And he, he takes out of his pocket um, a notebook and he tears out a couple of sheets and he asked me to write it down, which is, you know, first of all, the success principles we're talking about here. And I encourage people to, to kind of maybe take some notes also, um, cause I love to turn this into a little master class, you know, a little super brain, you know, limitless kind of training. Um, you know, first perspective is, is an important element because every behind every principle, there's a promise, right? Mm-hmm. And so point of view, um, asking new questions, getting new answers. Cause I think if we ask questions like, why does this happen to me? Or why can't I do this? It's not the most useful questions, mm-hmm. but questions like, how can I make this better? You know, how can I learn to be able to do this? Mm-hmm. Um, so power of questions, but then also writing things down is the first step of taking something in your mind and making it visible, right? So it's like the first step of creating something brand new. And I believe the future belongs to the creators where jobs are going to automation. They're going to artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. You know, what's truly not going to be outsourced is the things that are truly limitless, right? There's no limit to the power. It's not the sky's a limit. Our, our minds are the limit. So I go to answer him and he makes me write it down and I do this exercise. And then I fill up the sheet of paper and I fold it up to put it in my pocket mm-hmm. and he rips it right out of my hand and, I, and he starts reading it. And honestly, I'm like freaking out. I even just talking about it makes me like little, get a little like stressed because, you know, you're afraid of being judged, right? This is a complete stranger. Obviously he's doing pretty well for himself in life. Um, and I don't know how much time goes by, but then he looks up and he says, things that something that changed my life forever. He says, Jim, you are this close to everything on this list. And he spreads his index fingers, like maybe a foot apart. Mm-hmm. And, he, and I'm like, no way, give me 10 lifetimes. I'm not going to crack that list. And he takes his fingers and he puts them to the side of my head, meaning what's in between is like the bridge or the key to, to getting those things that I want. And, um, he takes me into his home and he, into a room that I've never seen before. It's wall to wall, ceiling to floor covered in books. Mm-hmm. Like I've never seen like a library in somebody's house before. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind, I've never read a book cover to cover. I'm not a good reader. And it's like being in a room full of snakes <laughs> for people like who just really feel uncomfortable. And what makes it worse is he starts going to the shelves and grabbing snakes and handing them to me. Mm-hmm. And I see these books start piling up and I look at the titles and there are these biographies of some pretty amazing men and women in history. And also some very early personal growth books like um, the magic of thinking big psycho cybernetics, um, uh, thinking grow rich, right? Like all these classics about talking about the power of belief and the human mind and, uh, personal development. And I, I, he says, Jim, I want you to read one book a week. 
And I go to him again. I was like, have you not heard, you know, we tend to fight for our limitations, right? Uh, people come to me all the time and say like, Jim, I have a horrible memory. I'm not smart enough. And I say, stop. If you fight for your limits, you get to keep them. Mm-hmm. If you fight for your limits, you get to keep them. And, and I'm fighting for my limitations. Why I can't read all these books. And I say, um, I have all this schoolwork. I have midterms. And when I said schoolwork, he, he says, Jim, do not let school get in the way of your education. Love that. And, um, and I didn't realize this was a Mark Twain quote, <laughs> um, but it really hit me. And I'm like, wow, yeah, that's so brilliant. I don't want school to go in with education. So many people associate learning and educate, like, mm-hmm. um, like when you graduate school or your learning is done, but obviously learning happens all the time, right? Learning is life. And, uh, and I was like, honestly, I can't commit to doing this because if I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I don't know how to do that. Mm-hmm. And, very smart man. He reaches into his pocket and he takes out my goal list, right? My bucket list. And he starts reading every single thing on that list line by line. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like, like Maggie and Brian, like if you can imagine, like I'm this insecure 18 year old kid that has no path, no way, very, very not sure of himself, not, not no self-esteem, very not confident. And, you know, you hear your dreams and goals yeah. in another person's voice, like set out into the world yeah. and hearing him say those things really messed with my mind and my, my spirit, something fierce. And honestly, a lot of the things on that list were the things I wanted to do for my parents, mm-hmm. you know, things they can never afford, or even if they had the money, they wouldn't do it for themselves. Mm-hmm. And with that leverage, you know, I, I talk a lot about purpose and motivation and how to overcome procrastination having a purpose that you feel really motivates all of us, right? A lot of times people won't, won't remember names or they won't remember their studies because they don't, they're not connected with the reasons why. And, um, and so I, I agree to read one book a week. Yeah. Fast forward, I'm back at school, I'm sitting at my desk and I have a pile of books I have to read for school and a pile of books that I promise that I wanna read. Mm-hmm. And I already couldn't get through a pile A so what do I do? I, I don't eat. I don't sleep. I don't exercise. I don't see people. I don't, I don't do anything. I just live in the library mm-hmm. and it's not very sustainable because a, you know, weeks into it, I end up passing out out of sheer exhaustion wow. at like two o'clock at night. I fall down a flight of stairs and I hit my head again at the library yeah. and I get, um, I woke up in the hospital. Uh, it was like two days later and I was down. I lost so much weight. I was, I was hooked up on all these IVs um, because I was malnourished. I was dehydrated. I was down to 117 pounds. So I was just like wasting away. And um, I thought I died. And it was the darkest time of my life. Because part of me, if I'm honest, you know, thought I wished I did because I thought I was such a burden, right? And not worth anything. And so when I woke up, a different part of me woke up also, though. Um, One that was hopeful saying there has to be a better way. And when I had that question, the nurse came in with a mug of tea and on it had a picture of a genius. It was Albert Einstein (laughs) and Albert Einstein was the book report I did for extra credit. I also had Maggie, the the safe situation where they call my parents in um, freshman English Mm -hmm. because I was failing. And um, it was very embarrassing to have my my parents take off from work to come to school and have that conversation with my teacher first year in high school and gave me that chance to do extra credit to do that report. And the report was actually on Albert Einstein mm-hmm. and uh, the one that I ended up throwing away. Um, and so I was really, really saddened. But um, the, the mug also had a quote from Albert Einstein that said, the same level of thinking that's created your problem won't solve your problem. Mm-hmm. And it made me think, well, what's my problem? Well, I'm a very slow learner. Well, how do I think differently about it? Well, maybe I can learn how to learn. And so I set my studies aside because I wasn't making traction there anyway. Mm -hmm. And I started studying these books and other books on how to learn because I asked my, the nurse for the course bulletin for next semester's classes. And I go through page and page and they're all classes on on what to learn, but nothing on how to learn. Mm -hmm. So I started asking questions like, well, what did they do before there were, um, you know, printing presses? How would they remember things? And, you know, before all this technology and I found these, you know, amazing, mnemonic memory uh, strategies. I learned the art of science of speed reading. I started flying. I wanted to solve this riddle of how does my brain work so I can work my brain, Mm -hmm. right? How does my memory work so I can work my memory better? And about 60 days into it, a light switch flipped on 
And I swear to you, it's just like a different world. It's just, I started to understand things for the first time. I started to be able to sustain my focus. I had this mental vitality. I saw my, my grades improved, but also my life improved. And from there, I couldn't help but help other people because I got really angry because I was like, wow, I struggled. I suffered so much because, you know, because I didn't know this. And so how can I teach other people how to do it? And one of my very first students, she was a freshman in college. I started to tutor her and she read 30 books in 30 days. Wow. Now imagine if you're a student or you're an entrepreneur or want to be, and you want to be an entrepreneur and aspiring to be, and you can go online and buy 30 books or go to library and get 30 books on negotiation or investing on, you know, anything. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and read it, not skim it or scan it, but really read it. And I wanted to find out not how she did it. I want to know why going back to purpose and motivation, because I know how, because I taught her how I wanted to find out what her, her drive was. And I found out her mother was dying of, goodness, her mother was dying of terminal cancer and the book she was, uh, doctors gave her only two months to live 60 days. And the books she was reading were books to save her mom's life. Mm -hmm. And, um, I wish her luck and prayers six months goes by and I get a call from this young lady and she's crying and she's crying and she won't stop. And when she eventually does, I find out their tears of joy that her mother not only survived, but is really getting better. Doctors don't know how, they don't know why. The doctors all called it a miracle, mm -hmm. but her mother attributed 100% to the great advice she got from her daughter who learned it from these books. And in that moment, I realized that if knowledge is power, then learning is our superpower. Mm -hmm. That if knowledge is power, our ability to learn, that's our superpower. And it's the superpower we all have. And so my, my goal in life and my mission Till the day I die, it will be showing people how to, how to unlock that power. Wow. I think that is incredibly powerful. Um, you know, the, the, the girl who had 30 days to read 30 books, I, I think it, it shows a lot of what we are capable of doing. And I think mm -hmm. that we often, you know, try to tell ourselves like, oh, 30 days and 30 books. Like, I don't know if I can do that. Just like how you mentioned to your friend's father, you couldn't read that many yeah. books while you had to study for, for college and you were already struggling in college, right? But if we take that concept and apply it to anything else, I think you mentioned in previous podcasts as well, remembering other people's names, right? If we, you know, try to remember other people's names, I think we have this misconception that, you know, we, we can't remember everyone's names because we meet so many people on an everyday mm -hmm. basis. But if we're, you know, if someone had paid us, you know, a thousand dollars to right. some person's name, we would remember that person's name for the rest of our lifetimes. Right. And it's, it's not about our capability, but it's about like, if we want to do it. Right. And what yeah. is that, what is that driving factor for us to want to do something? So I think that's incredible. Yeah. And, and I think we can always tap into that, you know, and sensitize knowing that like, for example, with names, and that's a simple example, because most people have struggles with that. You know, we've all had the opportunity, you know, where we meet somebody and the name just disappears out of her mind, mm -hmm. or it's not a short-term thing. It's a long-term thing. You're just out and about. And, you know, you turn around somebody you recognize, but for life of you, you don't remember their name. And what makes it worse is when that person has the nerve to remember your name. Right. Mm -hmm. Or you have to introduce two people. And then for those people, you know, who want to be able to network or business etiquette, I think it's the number one skill because mm -hmm. how are you going to show somebody you're going to care for their business, their future, their finances, their health, whatever their family, whatever you ask, you have to offer them mm -hmm. if you don't care enough just to remember them. But if, so we don't remember all names, but we don't forget all names either. And mm -hmm. I think some of the names that we remember, we were motivated where maybe they're, you're attracted to that person or they could be good for your business or a great opportunity. And what I'm saying is you can get motivated by asking yourself, why do I want to remember this person's name? Maybe it's to show the person some respect. Maybe it's to practice these things you learn in the podcast. Maybe it's to, you know, get a referral or make a new friend, but without reasons, you won't get results. You know, there's a great book called start with why by uh, Simon Sinek. I tend to mention a lot of books because I think leaders are readers. If people have seen me on social media with, um, you know, Oprah or Elon Musk or Bill Gates or Richard Branson or whoever, like we, we bonded over books, mm -hmm. you know, because the best of the best are always learning no matter what their field happens to be. And um, I see that as a theme with, with most successful people, whether they're educators, entrepreneurs or, or otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to point out to you that, you know, with the person that helps you when you're 18, literally it only takes one person to change your life and open up a new perspective for you. Yeah. And that, that, that's my, every time I go on stage, you know, like I'm, I'm still a, kind of a shy guy, right. I, I, um, 
you know, it took me like three decades to put this book out. And it's not because I didn't have the book written. It's just, I didn't, I didn't really, I still don't really want to be known, which is, I don't know. It's that's weird. It's not like an imposter syndrome kind of thing. It's more that, um, you know, I, I want to help people. And so I feel more in a moral obligation to do what I do, but it's still not, you know, like the most comfortable thing to be on camera and to mm-hmm. be on stages just cause I, I still, you know, a nine year old boy still really doesn't really want that attention. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. that you bring that up too, because, you know, we have some pretty influential influential people on the podcast like yourself and the funniest thing is like they always mention that i'm doing these things but deep inside i'm still have this fear i still have this doubt Mm -hmm. and it's great that you're mentioning to us right now because we see you jim and we see you as this complete individual with virtually no insecurities right the fact that you're mentioning to us shows us that you're still human Mm -hmm. that you're that that you know whatever you're accomplishing we hope to accomplish one day as well and inspire a new generation to do the same Mm -hmm. yeah and that kind of leads me down like the inspiration for your book you know, we heard, we listened to your podcast. We heard these, these, these short snippets of all these mm-hmm. powerful, influential people that come into your podcast. I like, want to hear more about like, like your techniques and yeah. your habits and everything about the, the writing limitless. Yeah. I mean, and to anyone who's on this path. So I think if, if you're listening to this conversation right now, and I really applaud the two of you for making space and creating this platform, you know, to help individuals that are just, you know, they're willing to work. They just, you know, looking for some guidance. Cause that, that's who I was when I was 18. It, like it was, it was never a matter of whether I was willing to, to do the work. Right. I mean, a lot of people can make excuses or they can complain, but we can't be upset by the results we didn't get from the work we didn't do. Right. So I'm a big person about ownership and this kind of radical ownership of your life. I think it's very important that we are responsible for our life and, um, not at the effect of things, you know, and that, that means also responsible for our thoughts, responsible for what we feed our mind, feed our body, you know, who we spend time with. And the past might've created like our environment experience created us, you know, shaped who we are, but we are responsible for who we are today and who we are tomorrow. And so I think the first place to start is agency, meaning that all of you, you know, all of us, you know, we're all thermostats. We're not thermometers. But sometimes we, we, we fall back at default being a thermometer and a thermometer as the metaphor goes, it's, it just reacts to the environment. And sometimes we react to things we do. I react to what's going on in the world right now, you know, cause I'm, you know, touched by like a lot of that and like, like, like many people are, um, you know, we react to the economy, we react how people treat us, but a thermostat doesn't react to the environment. It gauges the environment, you know, it knows what's going on. But then it sets a temperature and like, um, or it sets a goal or a vision and then the environment reacts to it. And so I would remind everyone who's listening is that you have more, you are stronger than, than you think you are, you know, and that you matter. And it's not because you did or bought or, or something. It's just, you always have been and you always will be, you know, that doesn't mean we can't improve and get feedback and learn from mentors, but you know, that feeling of wholeness, we're not separate from something. I, th- I think it's important. Um, that's why we spend so much time with like concepts of gratitude and how that rewires your brain. And, you know, especially with what's going on in the world, you know, while um, fear is contagious and viruses are contagious, so is positivity. So is kindness, you know, so is, so is compassion, you know? And I think that part of what we're here to do is like, I asked this question the other day because my title of my book, as you mentioned, the limitless, how do you become limitless in a limited world? Mm-hmm. Right. And I, my answer is we do it together. Mm-hmm. Right. And I feel like there's that, that African proverb that says, if you want to go faster, you go alone. But if you want to go further, you go together mm-hmm. and, um, and we do the best we can. And the limitless is not about being perfect at all. Right. Limitless is just about progress. It's just about advancing beyond maybe what you believe is possible, uh, you know, for yourself and for other people. And so, yeah, that all the, all the tips and everything come, it starts with a mindset that this is possible, that I am capable of it, that I deserve it. Right. Because sometimes if we don't believe that you can learn a great method for how to remember names, but if your mindset is, Oh, I'm not smart enough. Then you're still going to be stuck in that box. You know, that self-talk that we all have that critic, you know, that guy, that person that, that kind of squelches things that, um, I always tell people your brain is like a supercomputer and your self-talk is a program that will run. So if you tell yourself, 
I'm not good enough or I'm not good at remembering names. You won't remember the name of the next person you meet because you program your supercomputer, you know, not to. And so I think the beginning of all changes is, is self-awareness and personal responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, so that way, as an, especially for an entrepreneur, I know many of your, your, your community, they want to start a business or they started a business, mm-hmm. you know, entrepreneurs are people who, you know, they value their freedom. They want to do what they want, when they want, wherever they want with who they want and so on. Um, I mean, and, and it takes, it's not always easy. Like the entrepreneurs for me, it's been my experience that it's the people who like, they don't work 40 hours a week, speak, you know, working with someone else so they can work like 60 hours a week for themselves, <laughs> yeah. you know, which is kind of a way an interesting phenomenon. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I, I think we listened to one of your previous podcasts and you coined the term unlimiting. Yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah. want to quickly talk about unlimiting? Yeah. Lists? Yeah. Uh, unlimiting. I feel like a lot of our limits are learned. Mm-hmm. It's not like I was born with this idea that I was broken you know, you're most of us, you know, we were a blank slate, right? And then, so it gets imprinted on us from our environment or other people, you know, their expectations, their opinions. And I think that's really holds us back, you know, that sense of identity, you know, um, and this is whether it's in the Asian community or, or other, like we, we have a perception of how people see us and we try to fit that mold. Mm-hmm. And sometimes um, because of it, we become more limited or reserved or we don't express ourselves or, or believe in ourselves because of it, you know, through media or marketing. I think the nature of this conversation really is about, it's about transcending. It's about transcend. It's about ending the trance, right. you know, ending this mass hypnosis or the hypnosis we tell ourselves that this is impossible. And so unlimiting is the active process of uh, relearning and unlearning, you know, um, things that hold us back, whether it's in our mindset or in our motivation. You know, some people, they're just not motivated. They can have limitless ideas and vision and they can have the right methods, but they're not motivated. So they procrastinate maybe because they haven't found that purpose or maybe because they're exhausted. You know, energy is a big part of human drive and motivation Mm -hmm. that, you know, sometimes, especially for your entrepreneurs who are listening, you know, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. I've been working since the age of nine or 10. I, I haven't gotten a paycheck from, from a, a job. You know, I've always done kind of um, these kind of side hustles. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you have to uh, feed your business um, until it feeds you back, mm-hmm. right? And then in the beginning, I could tell you, like, it's not, it's not glamorous. At least it wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to sacrifice. There's all that stuff underneath that iceberg that people see on on yeah. social media about how great it is, but all the discipline, all the sacrifice, all the deep work, you know, all the late nights, you know, sometimes, and it, and it's tough, but if you're, if you, if you're willing to do what other people won't do, then you can live a life that other people can't, mm-hmm. you know, in the beginning, you know, we're all grossly underpaid when we start a business or anything, any other venture for pursuing your dreams. But if you're consistent, you're always learning and you're kind, right. Then eventually it'll switch. You know, and then you could have that incredible life, but it, it's not like fake it till you make it for me. It's really face it till you make it, you know, Mm -hmm. go through that challenge because with challenge, just like building a muscle, you challenge it and it'll grow because human beings are the ultimate adaptation machines. Our minds are so capable of stretching, you know, and and doing things that we never thought were possible. We discover more about the human brain more in the past 10 years than the probably the past thousand years combined. And we found as we're grossly underestimating our own skills and capabilities and, and potential. Mm. Yeah, I love oh, that. Incredibly powerful. And thank you so much for tying it all back to entrepreneurs because that is mostly our demographic. And I think a lot of, you know, people who want to become entrepreneurs, they tend to think like, I'm not capable of doing that. You know, I, I don't have the mindset to do that. But like you said, you know, as long as you put in the consistency and the hard work and, and yeah. it, you know, I think anyone is capable of doing it. Consistency is number one to success. Mm-hmm. What we got in this podcast. <laughs> yeah. And, and and when you have like the amazing people that you've attracted to the show, I think they would agree that if you're persistent, you could, you could achieve it. But if you're consistent, you could keep it. Mm-hmm. A lot of times things uh, in our career, it's attainable, but not sustainable over time. So that's why the consistency is important because little by little, a little becomes a lot, 
right? It really adds up. And this is a testament because it's a reminder of whoever needs to listen to this. You know, I think one of the powers of social media is they give you role models or inspiration, but it went, and I love your, your, the questions that you have in this conversation, because there's always that origin story, right? Mm -hmm. not, not everybody hears those things. So they can't easily relate, you know, to somebody, they think they're just born and, oh, I just I was born reading a book a day and just born speaking in front of 250,000 people, you know, every year but people that weren't there when I was like scared to death to speak in front of like, you know, group of eight second, you know, second graders, mm -hmm. you know, and like terrified about what I'm going to say. And, you know, and those things, my first event was like, like that small, you know, and I'd still, you know, be sweaty and my, my palms are just <laughs> hearts beating out of my chest, but it's just a reminder to everybody that every expert was once a beginner, that every professional mm -hmm. was once an amateur right? Success is this little small steps that eventually add up to big, bigger things in life. Right. Yeah. Also, I want to take a moment to acknowledge how far you've grown since mm -hmm. you were that eight or five year old kid. Thank you. Just looking back and looking at the things you're able to accomplish now, how many people that you held, the book they're publishing, your platform and everything, mm -hmm. you should be extremely proud of what you accomplished so far, Jim. And yeah. Yeah. And we thank you for being authentic as well. I think that it's so important to to just you know, see all of the accomplishments that you made. But at the same time, during this podcast, you still say that, you know, sometimes you do get shy. Sometimes you still get nervous on stage. And I think it's so important for all of us to know that because Brian said earlier that, you know, there's this, you know, aura around you that makes us see Jim as like the perfect person. And mm -hmm. you're always so confident. But we do have our insecurities, you know, that that five year old child back in the day that that you're, you're still you still have that inner child in you. Right. We still all have that inner child in us. And it's okay to have those flaws sometimes, but, you know, we just want to commend you for all the hard work and um, accomplishments that, that you have made and have gone so far with. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, I, I, I appreciate you both. And, and I think that's what we're here to do is here to be able to, to uplift each other. Right. You know, especially in, in, in trying, you know, difficult times that you can never have too much positivity you know, now is not the time to shrink down. Uh, you know, I think, I think one of the biggest mistakes people are making is out of fear. They're shrinking what's possible to fit their mind when they should be expanding their mind to fit all that's possible. Mm -hmm. You know, my message for everyone is do not downgrade your dreams mm -hmm. to make, meet this current situation. Mm -hmm. We should be upgrading our mindset, our motivation, our commitment, our consistency, our education, you know, to be able to meet those big audacious dreams. And, uh, and that's what really what leadership is. And I feel like we need that more than ever, that you don't want to dim your light because it's shining in somebody else's eyes. Mm -hmm. If anything, you know, spark, you know, be an example, inspire people around you with your grit and your grace, you know, for anyone who's struggling right now, I want to remind you that part of self-care is, is falling in love with that person in the mirror who's been through so much, but is, but is still standing. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, you know, and I, I would imagine a lot of people who are listening can remember a time when they didn't think they could survive. But my response to that is you did, you know, because you're listening to this right now and, and you will continue to do that. You know, and so I think we're all here to just to do the best we can. And I think there's a version of ourselves that we haven't met yet. Mm -hmm. And the goal is just to show up every single day until we're introduced to that person. Yeah, absolutely. I'm kind of curious too, Jim. I know you help a lot of people. How has helping people change your life? throughout your entire 20s, 30s to now? Yeah, I, I would say that it's it's core about who we are. I think everybody, you know, especially, um, you know, during, during the pandemic, you know, it's interesting because I think this is a wonderful opportunity for clarity. You know, often when you're going 100 miles an hour throughout the day before this, we never pause to say like, hey, am I, am I, you know, I'm so busy. Am I going in the right direction? Because someone can be very efficient at the things that they're doing but you could climb the ladder of success very efficiently and then get to the top and realize that it's leaning on the wrong wall. And that's, that's not the goal. I think a wonderful thing for people to do while they're cocooning, you know, physically distancing themselves. We feel like we're alone with our thoughts and our doubts. Maybe we'll be, you know, alone with our fears or maybe we'll be even feeling alone is to use this time where solitude could be a wonderful time for self-reflection and asking yourself, what's most, this is the magic question everyone should ask themselves what's most important to me in life? You know, kind of like what this person mentor asked me, like, why are you into it? What do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to have? What do you want to contribute and share? You know, what's most important to me in, in, in my career, in my contribution, in my relationships? You know, for me, my values have been always clear, you know, because my parents, um, they all, they, both my mom and dad lost their parents at a very early age. 
So it instilled in us uh, because they went through those life conditions. Um, when my dad came here from, uh, from Asia, he lost, he left two siblings behind and they, they passed, you know, um, you know, at a very early young age also, because there's a lot of poverty and a lot of, a lot of health challenges. And, but that made, that made family most important when we grew up because of their loss, they prioritized that with us, with their children. So for me, my values, you know, are love, growth, contribution, right? Um, I make all my decisions based on, you know, the people that I care about. And, um, but secondly, I make, you know, I, I just make a lot of my decisions based on how I could grow, but I grow. So I have more to contribute. Right. And, um, and then recently, you know, especially the past year or two, I added a fourth value, which is, um, adventure or joy, because I want to enjoy the process too, you know, because life is, you know, very unpredictable and not guaranteed for any of us. And so, um, so contribution to answer your question is right up there, you know, my top three, and um, that impact, I think it's important because that's another where I talked about uh, during, you know, what people could do while they're cocooning. One is get clarity on your life and also ask yourself not only what's most important to me, but the second question you want to ask is, are my actions aligned with those values? Are the actions I'm taking every single day, you know, hitting those targets and things that I, I prize and I treasure? Because a lot of people right now, they're complaining to us about being burnt out, yeah. right? They're exhausted. And, you know, with everything that's going on and sometimes we're not burnt out because we're doing too much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we feel burnt out because we're doing too little of the things that light us up, right? Mm -hmm. The things that we value, but how do we know unless we sit down and, and, and go through some kind of meditation or exercise or therapy or something to, or, you know, journaling to figure out what those things are. And then are your actions aligned with those things? Because if they're not, you, you're going to feel unfulfilled. Right. You're going to feel like you're just going through the motions. And I think it's very important for a students, uh, aspiring entrepreneurs, you know, or going on that path is it's not sustainable unless it's hitting those values. Otherwise you're going to self-sabotage, right? You're going to take one step forward and two steps back because it's not giving you like the things that make you really light up. Um, but going back to kick, um, so we talk about clarity. Um, but the other part of it is, is care. Right. I think now is so important. The second C is to is to care for yourself, especially everything that, that's going on with the pandemic and uh, divisiveness, you know, hate crimes and everything like there, it's not just about physical. That's certainly important. You know, people are doing the right things. They, they know all the things to do there, but also like mental health. Also, you know, part of mental health is sometimes disconnecting with everything that's going on because we do not, this is a long game, right? This isn't, this is a marathon. This is not something, the things that are going on in the world, not going to be fixed overnight. Right. And so remember what's attainable and sustainable, it's different. And how can you sustain this? So, you know, I would say, take care of yourself because chronic stress shrinks your brain, chronic fear, where, where a lot of people in the world and certainly this community are feeling right now, chronic fear actually suppresses your immune system. You know, it's a whole area of science called psychoneuroimmunology. It means you, maybe you're more susceptible to colds, the flus, the viruses. If you're always scared, you're in fight or flight, it will shut down your immune system and really compromise it. Mm -hmm. So my point of bringing this up is make sure you're getting sleep, you know, and make sure you're, you're, you're now more than ever, we should be, you know, making good choices in terms of what we eat, but not just feeding our body, what we feed our mind. And there's an algorithm in our mind, much like there's an algorithm to Instagram that whatever you engage with in social media, they give you more of, right? Whatever you like and share and comment and watch cat videos, they show you a lot more cats. <laughs> well, our mind has the same algorithm. So if we're always watching the news, you know, and everything that's dark and scary um, and fearful, then, then the problem is, and it's good to be aware, just like a thermostat engages the environment and knows what's going on. But then your newsfeed in your mind tends to be everything like that. The challenge is, it doesn't give you enough bandwidth to focus on possibility and solutions, right. Or, or what you could be grateful for at any moment also as well. And gratitude is a wonderful antidote to fear. You know, when you focus on the things that you have in your life, um, they come from that place. You can build on it because success breeds success. But the other antidote to fear that, that the community and your listeners or anybody's going through right now, it's not only care it's contribution. Because when you focus on, you know, how can you take some, take some of your time, your talent, your treasure to make a difference, and you put your focus on somebody else, then it's hard to feel really scared and vulnerable when you're serving somebody else. 
and you're putting you know, your focus on, on them. So contribution, the answer to your question, is a big part of my life. I believe the success formula is you learn so you can earn, right? We all learn, go through school so we can earn a living, right? Mm -hmm. But then you earn so you can return, right? And I think everything in nature grows. Um, it's green or it grows or it's brown and it rots, right? Um, and everything in nature also has to contribute, yeah. right? Otherwise it's eliminated. And so I feel like these are natural laws and I think we're all here to be to be what I call grow givers. We, you know, instead of just a go getter, who just, you know, back way when in the eighties, people were just getting, getting, getting. Mm -hmm. um, but I think later people are just giving and they become martyrs and they have nothing else to give. Right. And you have to fill your own cup. But I think we become grow givers. We grow. So we have more to contribute and to give to other people. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, even with limitless, our book, we gave away a hundred percent of the proceeds. Um, and so, you know, to, we built schools around the world from Ghana to Guatemala, um, fully funded the schools, um, teachers build the schools, the so clean water, healthcare, and, um, and also Alzheimer's research for women, women, um, speaking to the amazing sheroes out there, women are twice as likely to experience Alzheimer's than men twice as likely. Yeah. most of the research is done on male brains and treatments are, you know, mostly on male brains. And, and so we, we fund uh, research for women in the memory of my grandmother, you know, but I think that's what we're all here is to, to make it not only a dollar, but also a difference. Oh, well, thank you so much for all that you do, Jim. I think it's really important for all of us to make space for us to, to give, you know, and in return, you know, that could be knowledge that we can gain from, you know, the outside world. And mm -hmm. it's just so important for us to, you know, continue giving and, you know, um, practicing gratitude. Yeah. yeah. So you talk a lot about your love for superheroes. I would love to know why you love superheroes so much and who is your favorite superhero and how oh. has that um, kind of contributed to unleashing your inner superhero within yourself? Yeah, I think there's a, I call it the superhero you. It's there's a the Y-O-U. I think we, um, you know, it's interesting. I, the answer to your question, I, I became enam enamored with superheroes because um, as I mentioned, when I was five, six, I couldn't read. So I taught myself how to read by reading comic books. Um, a family member gave me a comic book and I just was like, I read this, reread this comic book so many times, you know, at late at night when my, when my parents thought I was sleeping, I'd be underneath the covers with a flashlight and, um, something about the stories guys. It's just like, um, it's about hope, you know, it's about real help. It's about how one person can make a difference. You know, uh, most superheroes are extremely flawed. They have their own challenges. You know, the, the most epic, iconic superheroes, they're, they're all orphaned. Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, you know, they all lost their parents um, in an early age. Um, and so they had challenges, uh, but they're willing to push past their challenges and there to be able to contribute. Um, I, uh, I got to, uh, I mentioned this uh, in the book, but I, I got to introduce two modern day superheroes together. Um, they wanted to meet each other. And so I take them out to dinner and it was Richard Branson and Stan Lee, mm -hmm. you know, the co-founder of all the superheroes, the creator of all the superheroes. And in the car, I asked Stan, who's your favorite? I asked the same thing, who's your favorite? And he said, it's uh, Iron Man. So I have like an Iron Man case on my computer <laughs> and everything. And, um, and he says, Jim, who's your favorite? And uh, I said, Spider-Man, because I posted on Instagram, I had a big Spider-Man tie. Mm -hmm. um, and when I said Spider-Man in his iconic voice without a pause, he goes, with great power comes great responsibility, <laughs> right? And truth be told, I still sometimes switch words around, maybe because I've had three traumatic brain injuries before age 12. And, you know, when I'm reading or I hear something, sometimes I'll switch. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Stan, you're right. With great power comes great responsibility. And the, uh, uh, the opposite is also true. With great responsibility comes great power. And that's where I came up with that idea about personal responsibility. Well, that when we take responsibility for something, we take ownership over it mm -hmm. and it gives us great power to make things better. Mm -hmm. And I want to remind everybody that it's, it's hard to take responsibility, but it's a lot harder life if we don't, because if we just do the easy things in life, which is, you know, like, um, we project or we, we procrastinate or we just kind of put whatever and life gets very hard, you know, but if you do the hard things in life, life gets easy a lot easier, you know, because if you can't get yourself to do the difficult things, then, um, then life, you know, gets very hard. I actually have, for those of you watching on video, I have this, um, 
picture of Stan Lee. It's, it's actually uh -huh. up all the way on the top of my office here. Um, and it's made out of candy, like, cause he's a big kid. It's made out of like, um, like, like gummies and like, uh, gum, like these little gum drops and everything. It's a yeah. picture of Stan, but I, I put it there as a reminder, you know, to always to, to take ownership of over things. And, um, you know, Stan, he was uh, one of my mentors, um, you know, until he passed and he had two passions. He, he would, um, he would still go to work nine to five because he loved telling stories, you know, and the other thing is, um, his wife, he, he loved, he loved his wife so much. And this is, a, this is a good role model, you know, for me, but it just reminded everyone. And he was also very, uh, playful and because of it, he just learned all the time. And I just want to remind everybody to bring joy into whatever you're doing, that if you, um, if you love, if you love what you do mm -hmm. or you, or, or you, uh, you bring the love into what you do, then you could, you could add five days a week to your life, <laughs> you know, just, just by doing that. And, um, and so, yeah, my, my, my favorite, I would say Spider-Man it is definitely there. Batman was a big, uh, you know, superhero for me growing up. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was Spider-Man because he was bullied in high school. And I really, I, I could identify with that mm -hmm. Batman. I love because, um, you know, he had some trauma early on and, um, and he's also, you know, supposed to be human. So he didn't have any superpowers. He just yeah. used study and discipline and, and everything. Modern day superheroes that like in, in real life was, was Bruce Lee, you know? And so that was, he was, you know, I have, I don't know how many pieces of Bruce Lee art and statues around. Um, I got to be with Linda and Shannon, you know, his, his wife and daughter on, on, on his 70th birthday on the day we were in San Francisco in Chinatown. They took me to the hospital that uh, he was born and it was their very first time visiting the hospital. And uh, we got to sit three of in, in the room that he, that Bruce was actually born in. Um, they since um, uh, tore down the, that, that hospital, but that was for his 70th birthday. But he has this quote and many quotes, um, but one of them is the key to immortality is first living a life worth remembering. And I just think that's just really epic. You know, the key to live forever is just living a life worth remembering. And I think if life is worth living, it's worth remembering. And that's why, I, you know, I spend so much time on memory, not just to remember facts, figures, foreign languages, formulas, but also remembering your life, remembering your loved ones, you know, remembering those, those kind of precious moments. Yeah. Thank you, Jim, for that reminder. And, you know, I'm so glad that Stan Lee was your mentor. I actually mm -hmm. ran into him at the airport nine years ago. Wow. Um, and it, I just was like, I was like, is that Stan Lee? So I just walked towards him. Immediately, he waved off his security guards so I can come there and give him a handshake. He's yeah, a really nice guy in person too. So I just remember that moment as well. It's like I, I walked to him too quickly. Security guard turned on me too quickly. <laughs> yeah, he's waved him off. He's like, he just checked my hand. He's like, nice to meet you, young man. And that was like a great impression of like, wow, like someone this powerful celebrity that I was oblivious yeah. to. I was like, just let me like shake his hand immediately. I, I, again, you give me goosebumps, you know, truth bumps, but it's, it's, it's wonderful when you meet, you know, those people that you look up to and they're the same person that you hope that they are, yeah. you know, and like, you know, behind the scenes, like off camera, you know, and so that, that's, that's an incredible moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. incredible. And thank you so much for sharing that quote where you kind of switched up that that uh, proverb popularized by the Spider-Man comics, yeah. about, you know, with great responsibility comes great power. And I think that's so, you know, relatable to the Asian community right now. And a lot of Asian people are kind of stepping in and speaking up um, mm -hmm. just about anything about Asian community. And with that responsibility and ownership, they have the power to actually make changes in the world. So thank you so much for sh sharing that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you think about the word responsibility, it's, the ability to respond, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and it is, it is, uh, it, it does weigh something, but it, you know, what weighs more is regret, yeah. you know, not doing what we can do while we're here. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I do feel that there's a, there is a sense of urgency, you know, that, you know, we have, and I'm speaking to anyone who's gone on this path for whatever your unique journey is, is that we have like this one life you know, why aren't we going towards those important things like our dreams and everything else? Like we're on fire, you know, like, um, and so now is the time to be too optimistic to scare and be, be too determined to be defeated. Exactly. But it's definitely mindset. 
Exactly. And yeah. so, Jim, we have one last question for you. And mm -hmm. that is what one advice could you give to an aspiring entrepreneur and how can they unleash their inner superhero as well? Yeah. OK, so a superhero for me is just it's not somebody that's like could leap tall buildings and shoot lasers out of their eyes. For me, I really focus on like modern day uses of like, what if you could leap tall stacks of books? <laughs> what if you could have laser laser focus? What if you're not bulletproof, but you have a bulletproof memory? I think these are modern day superpowers because now everybody who's listening, nobody is compensated and rewarded for their brute strength. Today, it's your brain strength. It's not your muscle power. Today, it's your mind power. And the faster you can learn, the faster you can earn. Because knowledge is not only power. Today, knowledge is profit. And I don't mean just financial, that's, that's obvious, right? But I mean all the treasures of your life. Like this young lady read 30 books in 30 days, was able to capture or recapture this treasure of health. He has that knowledge. And there's, there's not only a growing divide of, of wealth, you know, in this country and the world, there's a growing divide of those who know and those who don't know. And, um, and the, when you know, you can make good decisions because our life is a reflection of all the decisions we made up to this point. There's a quote in my book uh, from a French philosopher that says, life is the C between B and D. Life is C between B and D. B stands for birth, D stands for death. What's C? Choice. That I believe these difficult times, they could define us. These difficult times can diminish us or these difficult times can develop us. Ultimately, we, we decide. And so my advice for everybody here is recognize that a superhero is, there's a superhero in you. A superhero is somebody who has discovered and developed their superpowers. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we all have superpowers, a unique talent or a unique trait, some kind of strength, right? And, um, but just having and discovering and developing those superpowers doesn't make you a superhero though. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause we could have power, but that's make you a, a superhero. You have to use that power for purpose, right? You have to use it to make things better for others. And, um, and so what I would say, the, one of the, the greatest gift that you have, the number one wealth building asset that you have is found between your ears and more people upgrade their phones and their apps more than they upgrade the most important technology, you know, which is their brain. And I don't blame them. You know, your brain doesn't come with an owner's manual and it's not user friendly. We weren't taught how to access most of its potential in school. Mm -hmm. And so I would say those aspiring individuals, if there's a gap between where you are and where you want to be, learn how to learn. Like if you think about this, if there was a genie could grant you any one wish, but only one wish, you would ask for limitless wishes, right? Millions of wishes. Mm -hmm. Well, if I was your learning genie and I could help you become a master, an expert in any one subject or any one skill, what would the equivalent be of asking for limitless wishes? It'd be learning how to learn. Because if you can focus and concentrate and study technical material and understand it and read faster, and retain everything and make better decisions, then you could grant all your own wishes. You could apply that towards money, management, marketing, martial arts, Mandarin, music, everything in your life gets super easier. And so I would, my recommendation is the number one skill to master in the 21st century, entrepreneurs and otherwise, it's your ability to learn and rapidly it is your ability to learn rapidly and translate that learning into action. Right. And that's why I wrote limitless to be like the owner's manual for the brain so that you could access and get rid of those negative thoughts. You can be able to tap into your motivation that you can learn the new methods today on how to concentrate and achieve, you know, and, and, and radically change your habits because first you create your habits and your habits create you. Mm -hmm. But I would say double down and mastering this topic called meta learning. Meta learning is learning how to learn. It's the one subject in school that I think would have helped everyone with all the other subjects. And, you know, it's become my mission really to build better, brighter brains so people have their best future. No brain left behind. That, that, that's, that's the mission. I love that. Yeah, incredible. Thank you so much, Jim. And how can our listeners find out more about you and your book, Limitless, online? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, all the links are on my Instagram. We have uh, links there for three free uh, memory training videos on how to remember names. I literally pull people right on stage and show you how I do it. There's a link there also for a free um, speed reading masterclass where I spend an hour with you online and you bring a book and I show you how to improve your focus and your reading speed and comprehension 50% right there. Mm -hmm. um, people could go directly there at jimquick.com forward slash reading. Just have to spell my name right, K W I K. Mm -hmm. And um, our podcast, um, you know, which is on YouTube and Spotify and you know iTunes. Just search my name in your podcast app, and it's there. But I would challenge everyone, if I could, to uh, 
to take a screenshot of this conversation wherever they happen to be watching it and, um, and tag the three of us. Uh, so we get to see it and share just one thing in that post that you're going to do for your better brain. You know, I, I would train yourself to ask all the time. The question I get our clients to ask all the time, is this good for my brain or is this bad for my brain? You know, is this food I'm eating or is this thought or the people I'm spending time with? Is this sleep? Is this good for my brain or is this bad for my brain? The one thing that you're doing, because one of the best ways to learn anything is by teaching somebody else is to pay it forward. Right. Is that um, they call it the explanation effect. When you learn something to explain it to somebody else, you learn it so much better. And so I would say one of the ways of doing it, a quick challenge for all of you, take a screenshot of this, tag the three of us so we see it and share one thing in that post that, um, that you're gonna do for your better brain. So that way your fans, your family, your friends, your following could see that also as well. So you get to kind of light their flames. And I'll, I'll repost some of my favorites, um, you know, whatever platform you have posted on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And I'll actually gift a copy of, of the book um, to one person just as a thank you for wow. participating in that. But I, I really wanna thank the both of you for the amazing work that you do, you know, the platform I was telling you before we started recording, this is, it's more important than ever for people to hear real help and real hope, mm-hmm. you know, especially in, in sometimes um, too dark or, or dim a world, you know, and so when, when often are we having these conversations about potential? And my last bit of advice to everybody who's going through hard times is just knowing that, that, um, that you're not alone, you know, and that to seek help if you need it. There's no, there's no harm in asking for help. It's actually a show of strength, mm-hmm. you know, that you're strong enough to ask for help. And, um, and remember this, that, su- that kindness is a superpower also, that you, you never know the battles people are facing, right? You know, during even what's going on here, you know, I, I mentioned I live in a major city and, you know, and, you know, there's, there's these, these remarks, these hateful, the, you know, events that happen. My, my, my parents' home was vandalized and, you know, and they're in that generation. They're not going to speak out about it. They're not going to report it and stuff like that. Now is the time to kindness, you know, and show strength through kindness and compassion because those spread as equally um, and are equally contagious in a good way. Right. And, um, and so I would say that, um, my, my hopes for everybody here is that they just take one small, simple step that for everything that you listen to like this, for every hour you listen to that's positive, spend an hour in action, then don't let it just be knowledge for knowledge sake. I feel like we don't know something unless we're acting upon it. And I feel like that's our personal responsibility to do, you know, what we can do. And I know that it will be, it will be enough. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, Jim. That was really insightful. And just wanted to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It was incredible hearing about your story. Yeah. Thank yes. you so much, Jim. And this is just for you guys listening. This is just beginning of the iceberg. Please Google Jim. Yeah. Look at his other videos on YouTube. This is just one part of how much Jim impacts the world. <laughs> so please, please check out his other stuff and please check out his book, Limitless, as well. Yes. And thank you, Jim, so much for being on today's podcast. Yeah. Thank you. I wish everyone's days would be lots of life, lots of love. Lots of laughter, always lots of lots of learning. I love the word hustle. Hustle kindness, everyone. Okay, we will. All right, thank, thank you, Jim. you, Jim. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe to the show. We would like to get to the top 10 on iTunes, so be sure to leave us a five-star review. We release an episode every single Wednesday, so stay tuned. Thank you guys so much.